In this video, we will learn about the properties of polyatomic ions. We will also learn the names of some of the more common ones. A polyatomic ion is a charged species consisting of two or more atoms held together by covalent bonds. Due to these two properties, polyatomic ions are both molecular and ionic in nature. Because they are held together by covalent bonds, polyatomic ions remain intact when dissolved in water. The atoms do not dissociate. But since these species carry a charge, they can also act as a single ion in ionic compounds. Let's explore an example. NH4 plus is a polyatomic ion named ammonium. Since it carries a positive charge, it acts as a cation in an ionic compound. What ionic compound does the ammonium ion make with chloride? That's right. Since the chloride anion carries one single negative charge, we only need one ammonium ion and one chloride ion to create a neutral ionic compound, ammonium chloride. What products are created when solid ammonium chloride is dissolved in water? When ammonium chloride is dissolved in water, it dissociates into the ammonium cation and the chloride anion. Since ammonium is a polyatomic ion, it will not break up further into individual atoms. So, ammonium chloride dissociates into aqueous ammonium and aqueous chloride. Here's a table with some of the most common polyatomic ions. It's important to be familiar with each of them as they come up a lot. Let's try some examples with a few different ones. What is the ionic compound made up of sodium and sulfate? Exactly! Since sodium is an alkali metal, it makes a cation with a positive 1 charge. That means we need two sodiums to balance out the negative 2 charge of the sulfate ion. So the ionic compound made from sodium and sulfate is Na2SO4, sodium sulfate. What are the products when solid sodium sulfate is dissolved in water? Dissolving solid sodium sulfate in water, we get sulfate ions and sodium ions. Let's try another one. What is the ionic compound made up of magnesium and hypochlorite? Magnesium is an alkaline earth metal so it makes a cation with a positive 2 charge. Therefore, we need two hypochlorite ions to balance out the charge of one magnesium. So, our ionic compound is MgClO2, magnesium hypochlorite. Hypochlorite is what we call an oxyanion, anions involving nonmetals combined with oxygen. We have special rules for naming such ions. If a nonmetal forms two possible anions with oxygen, the one with the fewer number of oxygens has the suffix ITE, and the one with the greater number of oxygens has the suffix ATE. Nitrogen makes two oxyanions, NO2- and NO3-, which is nitrite and which is nitrate. Nitrate has three oxygen atoms, and nitrite has only two. Notice, however, that both of the oxyanions of nitrogen have the same charge, minus one. We see the same thing for sulfate and sulfite. Both are oxyanions of sulfur, and both have a negative 2 charge. Sulfate is just the one with more oxygens, and sulfite has one less oxygen atom. But what if a nonmetal forms three anions with oxygen? We still keep the suffix ATE for the species with the greatest number of oxygens, and use the suffix ITE for the one with one less oxygen atom. For the species with the fewest number of oxygens, we keep the suffix ITE and add the prefix hypo. Hypo means less. If a nonmetal makes four different anions with oxygen, we keep these rules but now the species with the greatest number of oxygens has the prefix per, like hyper, meaning more, in addition to the suffix ate. Chlorine makes four different oxyanions. We saw earlier in the video that ClO- is called hypochlorite. What is the name of the oxyanion ClO2-? We know that ClO- is hypochlorite. ClO2- has one more oxygen than hypochlorite, so we name it chlorite. What is the name of the oxyanion ClO4-? Exactly, ClO4- has the greatest possible number of oxygens, so we name it perchlorate. Usually, we don't like to focus on memorization in chemistry, but it's really important to know the names of the more common polyatomic ions. After all, we need to be able to discuss compounds without spelling out their names. After all, it's much more convenient to say to your friend, Hi Beverly, rather than saying, Hi B-E-V-E-R-L-Y. That would get exhausting.